Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the 14th HTML tutorial for Knowledge Highway, YouTube slash Knowledge Highway. And today we're gonna finish off HTML or HTML4 or whatever. HTML5 I will do a separate couple of episodes on so you can get those extra tags at some point, but for all intents and purposes I'm thinking that this will be the last HTML episode for a while, if not the second last while I tidy up uh, loose ends with one more, maybe, I don't know, bits that I might have missed. Anyway, let's start off as we have the whole series. I might not do this for other series, like have myself type out everything every time. But I thought, considering HTML is quite small and it's usually everyone's first attempt at anything programming-wise, why not make it a bit easier for people by typing everything out every time so they can follow along as they type it out, which you should be typing this out every time you do it, at least until you know it off by heart. So, I have made a HTML element with a body element within it, and let's just, let's just get going, I guess. Um, so, first thing to do, we're gonna do is, I guess, make a form. Let's do that. Uh, action, we'll set the action attribute equal to just what we had last time. I don't know that we're actually going to use this this time actually, but why not for revision purposes? So the action attribute of the form basically tells the form where to take the user when the submit button is pressed. And then I'm closing my form element, and within the form element, we're gonna start programming today. And first things first, we're gonna go over the select tag, which is basically a drop down menu. So let's open up a tag and write select, close it, and then move down a couple of lines, and then I'm gonna close the element with a closing tag. Now, uh, I don't know if this actually does anything. Let's save it and see if this changes anything visibly. Oh, it does. It makes us a nice little drop down that has nothing in it, which is just great. So, let's start out by putting some options in it. Uh, what would the tag be for an option? Well, it's in fact option. You guessed correctly. Let's give that a value attribute, which is, um, as we've done before, is uh, giving the input a value, uh, same way you would with a checkbox or a radio button. So, value equals, and let's go for fruit again, because uh, that's easy. Uh, <laughs> orange, well, orange, I'm going to make it all lowercase, because case sensitivity is a problem that you can encounter. Uh, but don't worry about that right now, we'll go over that when we do PHP or something. Uh, I'm going to call it orange, this is... And then I'm going to close the option tag or element. So, uh, what is this? What is going on? So we've made an option element uh, with the value of orange and then inside that element I've written out the actual word orange. So, actually, first of all, if we weren't to write out any value or what any um, anything within the element, it would look like this. The exact same as before. It would be empty, so make sure you actually put in some text to tell the user what they're going to click on. Here it defaults to orange because that is the only one we've entered so far. So let's give it a couple of other options. Um, so option value equals apple, because that is easy again. <laughs> Always going with the same fruit. Uh, slash option. And let's give it another one. Option value equals peach. And then uh, let's peach slash option. Okay, there we go. We should have three now, the one of which we can select at a time. There we go. That's cool. So, what if we want to put these into groups in our select box? Well, first of all, I'm going to move peach up beside orange because we're going to make a citrus uh, group and then we're just going to make a other group. So, um, above your option elements, uh, write out a another, we're going to put another tag and I'm going to write it out as OPT group. 
and then space uh, label equal. Oh my goodness, spelling equals. And then within the quotation marks, I'm going to write in citrus. So uh, we need to close that as well. So after peach, I'm going to take a new line and I'm going to type slash OPT group, all lowercase, and that's it. So we've now made an OPT group element, which I have to imagine stands for option group. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to fix my formatting a little bit by adding tabs so you can see what is within the option group element uh, with the label of citrus. So within the option group la uh, element with the label of citrus, we have put both orange and peach. Now uh, let's save it. That's not the save button. And then click refresh. And now we have a little group title, which you can't actually click on. You can't click on the group title, but you can click on the individual elements. Now that's cool. You can intermix uh, option groups with just uh, options that are not within option groups, but you can also have more than one option group. So let's add another one. OPT group label equals and other. And then I'm going to close the element after the option tag containing apple. So OPT group. And then I'm just going to tab beside the option tag just so we can see it better. Now save and refresh. And now look what we've got. We've got two uh, kind of grouped areas, one with orange and peach and one with just other. And you can continually add more options and such to this. Let's also go over, you're gonna want to give your select a name like you would any other uh, uh, input in a form. So call it something like fruit. <laughs> That's easy. So save that. And that doesn't make any difference to the actual page, but it's useful later when we're trying to fetch that data in PHP. So let's talk about some little attributes uh, for the select. We can add the attribute um, multiple equals, and then in quotation marks, multiple. I find this naming scheme weird when they do this, when they <laughs> make attributes that are set to their own name. But basically what this does or should do is let you select multiple uh, items. So there you go. You can, you can see all of them. You can select more than one, as you can see by holding down shift. And it's just, it's quite nice. This is a weird thing that I n have never seen on a web page before or very rarely. I didn't even know this existed, to be honest, until just recently. So um, there you go. That's the multiple attribute that you can add to your select. There's also another one that you can add. So let's remove multiple right now so you can see what it does. Um, disable. Disable. That is obviously not how you spell disable. Um, Oh, sorry, it's disabled. <laughs> Just checking my notes. Uh, you can tell I've not used this tag very often. So disabled equals disabled. And this is another one of those where you set it to its own name. And let's go. And as you can see, it's just grayed out. Uh, this one can actually be used on many different types of input. You could make, for example, uh, I'm going to make this above my select. Uh, Area, uh, element. I'm going to make an input element and I'm going to give it the name username. Oh, I should also give it a type. <laughs> uh, type equals um, text. Now save. Well, let's give it a bit of user friendliness by typing username colon before that tag and let's go. Boom. So now we have our username thing like we did last time, except this time I'm going to add the disable, disabled, sorry, um, attribute to that tag. And now let's look at it, and now you can't click on it. Cool, so now you can disable things if you don't want the user changing stuff or entering things. So that's interesting and useful. So, 
Uh, I think the next thing we'll go over is text area. So there is another type of input which isn't actually listed under input. I'm not absolutely sure why this is, but uh, it's its own tag in itself. So the tag name is text area. And um, we'll just give it a name. Uh, for example, post if you're going to make a form posting area. And save that. And now. Ha! Probably should close that tag. Sorry, I forgot to tell you to uh, close the text area element. This is one of those that you need to close. So, with that closed, you can now see that there's a big open text box here. Let's put it on, let's start putting things on different lines so it's more visible. I'm gonna add break tags after the username input and after the select input. So, let's look at this again. Yeah, that looks a bit better. So now you have a big area where you can just enter in text. Now you notice that I am able to select a bunch of white space here. This is because I have put the tags a couple of lines down and although HTML in general does not care about white space, when it's between two text area tags, for some reason it does care suddenly. So save that, oh jeez. <laughs> That was the wrong button. Let me get all my stuff back up. <laughs> oh, Windows, you and your shortcuts. So let's control S instead of window sign S. And then, yeah, now we don't have all this empty stuff randomly appearing. So what if you want to specify exactly how, um, how many like characters wide you can fit on uh, your text area and how many rows high this is? So... I mean, Firefox gives you the option to drag this out, but what if you want to automatically set it to like this wide or this wide? I don't know. Well, you can do that by using two different attributes for the text area, one of which is row equals and then, oh, sorry, rows equals and then just however many rows you want to give. So, for example, let's give it... 15 rows. So as we spoke about earlier, rows are vertical height. So now you can see the text box is much, much taller. Um, so this is basically like a height tag except from for a text area element. So let's also add our calls or columns uh, attribute. It's typed out as calls though for some reason. Sometimes they like to shorten attribute names, sometimes they don't. I don't really understand why, but that's the way it is. So let's give this a value of 80. So 80 columns across will give you space for 80 letters across. So if I were to type out 80 S's, this should be 80 S's right here, <laughs> the whole way across. So you kind of get it. It's columns for width or C-O-L-S and it's rows for height. Um, and you retrieve the data from a text area the same way you would with anything else by using the name, but we haven't learned about that yet, so don't worry about that yet. So that's just about everything. One other thing that I learned about is something called a field set, which I didn't know about recently, rather. Um, this is a fancy bit of built-in HTML magic that I did not know about. It basically draws a box around your form and makes it look all nice and pretty. So, how do you do this? Well, you use the field set tag. Um, we're gonna, oh gosh, field set tag. And we're gonna put this all the way around all our forms content, but not around the form tag itself. So just after the first form tag, I'm typing in field set and then after the very last input area, which in this case is text area, I'm closing it. So close tag, field, oh, I should really add the slash, field set, close tag. So basically just after and after starting the form and in before st ending the form. Sorry, I cannot speak today. Okay, I'm just gonna tab everything out so it's easier for you to see and easier for me to see. There we go. And now let's save this and see what happens. Da -da -da! Suddenly you have a big gray line 
around your form. Oh gosh, I've clicked off it again. It might be a little bit hard to see on um, on the video because uh, you're going to have to really put this up to HD to see this. But there is in fact a gray line if you look at my mouse, if you can see it. Hopefully the recording's picking up the mouse now. Uh, there's a gray line uh, box all the way around our form. So, what if we want to add a title for our form and we want it to somehow align perfectly with this line? Well, they give you a way of doing this. And that is called the legend. Well, you use a tag called the legend tag. So, let's open it. And you do you type this in right after the field set tag. So, legend, uh, close tag. And then I'm going to close the legend element with a closing tag and then inside the legend element you just enter the name of what you want to call the field set uh, or the form or whatever so here I'm gonna type in login as an example so save this and now when we refresh you can see that login is perfectly aligned within the the gray border kind of line and it looks nice and pretty um, let's make that a heading just so it's more obvious. So, heading one, and then close heading one, just putting the heading element around, the heading tags around the login word, and boom, now you can see it better. Uh, the gray line, it goes right on top of the gray line, which is very nice. It's kind of sleek. It's something that I've not seen many people use as well. Um, this is another one of those not very well known tags. Uh, so, out of interest actually, this is something that I've never tried, but I'm not sure what happens if you put another legend in. So let's try putting another legend, this is going to be experiment for all of us. Let's try putting another legend tag in just above a uh, text area, and I'm going to type in login part 2, and then close the legend tag slash element. And then let's refresh and see what happens. That was kind of what I was hoping for. Uh, but I guess you can use that as a secondary um, heading in your form. It's kind of confusing the you though. So anyway, <coughs> to summarize, what we have gone over today is the select drop-down box tag uh, element, which allows you to make a drop-down box. We've gone over the text area, which allows you to make a big area for people to enter text in. We've gone over the disabled um, attribute, which you can gray out uh, different things with. And we've also gone over the multiple attribute, which you can put in select, and it will make the select box into something entirely different where you can select multiple items. Finally, there's also the field set at, uh, element, which you can put around your form's content, and it will format everything really nicely. And by using the legend element, you can add a title to your nicely formatted field set. So, <laughs> that was quite a lot. Ho I'm hoping that by this point, now that you've been through all the other HTML tutorials, it's fairly easy to keep up with this faster pace. Um, but if not, then please go ahead and go through the tutorials again, or go to w3schools.com, which is the best resource that I have found by far uh, for learning HTML and multiple other web-based programming languages. So that's going to do it for this series for now. I may add an extra bonus kind of video just to uh, get anything that I missed, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that I've covered everything that I want to for now at least. Uh, so yeah, next tutorial series, we'll see what what happens? It will probably either be CSS or JavaScript or something. So join me then, guys. See you later.